Uh, so cricket for Americans. So why should you care? Um, so cricket is the second most popular sport in the world. Uh, soccer has about 3.5 billion fans. Cricket is second with 2.5 billion. Um, why are there so many people that like cricket? Uh, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. It's really, really popular sport, and they have like tons and tons of people. Uh, other than that, it's small pockets of love across the world. So uh, the big in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and the only team in the Western Hemisphere is the West Indies. So the entire Caribbean put together. And they still call it the West Indies. It shows you uh, where the game's been. But second most popular sport in the world. Okay, so what do you want to do if you want to play cricket? Like, what do you actually need? What does it look like? So, a cricket ground is a really large oblong field. Uh, and really cool fun fact, fun fact about cricket, there is no standardized dimension for a cricket ground. So, you can, uh, you need a really, really, really big rope to signify, so you can see this rope here all the way that signifies out of bounds. But other than that, you can make a cricket pitch, sorry, a cricket ground as small or as big as you would like. This, I believe, is the Melbourne Cricket Ground, the 10th largest stadium in the world. Uh, so the largest cricket ground in the world. It can seat over 100,000 people. And when you play cricket at the level that you would if you were in the MCG, the cricket mound would be really, really, really big. But if you and your friends get together, you don't have to play with a like full-size cricket ground. Think of it as like you play soccer with your friends. You don't necessarily play on like a short, uh, the full field. Yeah. What is really, really big? Mean in like meters or yards? Yeah. So this is you could fit uh, in this situation. You could probably fit a football field and a half, maybe going that way. It's huge, absolutely giant. Yeah. I, I don't know the dimensions, but we can get them. Yeah. It's big. Very, very big. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna need is this really, really, really big rope and a really, really, really big field. But everything that's not in this little area here, we're gonna ignore for an extended period of time, right? So we're not gonna talk about the outfield for a long time. We're only gonna talk about what goes on at the pitch. So this area here is called the pitch and we have our own, uh, I, I designed an, a metric cricket pitch here so we could figure out what's going on. So what do you need when you're actually at the pitch? So you need this rope. So let's start with a ball. So you're gonna need a cricket ball. I'm gonna to toss this around. Cricket balls are really, really hard. Um, this, is, this is an expensive cricket ball. If you're playing international test cricket, the cricket ball will be red. If you're playing one day cricket with your friends, the cricket ball is generally white. But you're gonna need a ball, pretty hard. You're gonna need a- red, white. Uh, they just sim symbolically, they're different colors. Is it red more expensive? Yeah, uh, yeah probably. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is a bat. So uh, real cricket bats look like this. They're like really flat. They're about, I would say about four or five inches long, uh, across. Uh, because we don't have a bat, we're, for our uh, symbolic cricket today, we're going to use a baseball bat. But in general, uh, you would imagine swinging like this and thus the flat part of the bat facing out, right? And the final thing that you're going to need to play cricket are these things. Anybody know what these things are called? Wickets. Wickets. Yeah. So in general, there are like 18 different things in cricket called a wicket. Um, and each of the things that are called a wicket actually have names that are not wicket to help you understand which wicket they're talking about. So these, these poles that are sticking out of the ground that you see here are called the stumps. So in real cricket, you would have three stumps across. I believe it. it it's about probably nine inches across the three stumps, maybe a foot. And then these things on the top, anybody know what they're called? They're called the bales. So you have these stumps, and then on top of the stumps, you have the bales. So the stumps only exist to hold up the bales. So nothing that occurs with the stumps matters. All that really matters is whether or not the bales are dislodged. Right? So the stumps, it's not about whether or not the ball hits the stump. It's about whether or not the ball or somebody hitting a stump actually dislodges the bales. Yeah? Are the bales separate or are they connected? Not connected. In fact, they fly up. The idea is like... You can't get one without the other. In a store, you probably can. But you cannot play without one or the other. You need both. No, I mean, do they come off together or something? Oh, uh, no, oh, these are not connected to each other. You have two bales. Wait, I yeah. thought those were wickets. I looked down and I was looking at the ball. 
So this, this entire thing would be called the wicket. But these are the stumps and these are the bales. So for our cricket today, we're, here's our bat. We have our ball being passed around somewhere. We have our, uh, our stumps. Thank you, Tim, for ordering a poster. Uh, there should be three stumps, but we're going to have two for all intents and purposes. And we don't have the bales. Uh, we have the bat. All right, so let's take a look at what actually, during a cricket match, would go on at the pitch. Right? So these are the people who are going to be involved in the pitch, on the pitch. This is this whole thing would be called the pitch, um, while cricket is being played. So uh, I, need, I need somebody with a good arm. I need a volunteer. Anybody? Markman, great. Where's my ball? Yeah. Markman, you're going to be our bowler. Nice. All right, so you're going to come down here. So Markman is going to be the bowler. For all intents and purposes, the bowler is synonymous with the pitcher in baseball. You would think the bowler is the one who is actually going to be delivering the ball. Uh, I need somebody who's big and burly. Anna, you're going to be our batsman. So you're going to be right here standing in the crease holding the bat. And I need somebody with good hands. Somebody's got to have good hands. Tim, you're our wicket keeper. So on the bowler's team, you're going to have a guy or a girl, you can play female cricket, who's going to sit back here. He's the only person on the pitch that gets to wear gloves. And he's going to sit behind the stumps, and uh, he's going to be a wicket keeper. Uh, let's see. We need Theoretically, you can see there's two other people in the photo. So the umpire would be standing right here, looking straight on at the wickets, like this, at the stumps. And there's going to be a second batsman, we'll pretend for the time being, that is also standing here. So those are those three people that are here. So the bowler, Markman, the guy with the arm. The umpire, who's wearing some sort of interesting pants, looking straight on. The batsman is going to be standing to the opposite side of, because there's a second set of stumps over here of where the wicket is. Um, then the bowler wants to run up. You see the batsman, and you see the wicket keeper. OK. This is what normal cricket looks like. These are, these are the people that are involved. Now, let's talk about what happens on a normal cricket play, although it's not really called a play, but for the time being, we'll call it a play. Uh, a ball. OK, so Markman, if you don't mind, eventually you're going to be our bowler. All right. But Markman can run as far back as he wants, as long as he's on the pitch. He's going to get to the crease that is located on this side, and he is going to deliver the cricket ball like this. Now, the rule is your, your elbow cannot bend more than 15 degrees. So most people, so it's not a baseball pitch. You can't do this. So what you're going to see, and we're going to see some videos, it's really like you see almost like your entire body curl, and you throw it at, uh, at the wicket. And you get one bounce on the way to the wicket. Right? You do not have to take the bounce, but almost everybody tries to bounce the ball as they throw it towards the wicket, because bouncing means that there's random variation that happens. Right? If you throw it in the air and somebody visually sees it, they can clobber it. It's not really a curve ball when you can't get your elbow involved. So you really want to bounce it off. Now, the biggest difference in trying to explain cricket to someone versus baseball is in baseball, when the ball is delivered from the bowler to the batsman, uh, every time that happens, there is either a good outcome for the hitting team or a good outcome for the pitching team. Right? So if the ball, if it's not close to the wicket, for example, or not close to the catcher in baseball, that's a ball. A ball is good for the hitter. So every time the ball is delivered, it's one or the other. Cricket has three outcomes. Okay? Now, we're going to get to the good outcome for the hitters and the good outcome for the pitchers here in a second. But the majority, I think I'm going to say this correctly, the majority of deliveries from a bowler to a batsman in cricket involve, are something called a dot ball. So nothing happens. right? Now, when Markman delivers the ball, so I'm going to be the ball in this situation, it comes, boom, bouncing towards Anna. It does not matter if Anna swings, Anna can swing, not swing, pirouette, talk to her friends, text her dad, like ball comes through. What she decides to do has absolutely nothing to do with the outcome of the play, right? It's just like she's here, she, there's going to be a goal that she wants to accomplish, but let's keep in mind, it's not different than baseball. There's no if you swing, there are certain outcomes that come in, and if you don't swing, it's not like the ball, every ball is equally live. Right? And the vast, I don't know the vast majority, but the majority of balls are going to be dot balls. So what does a dot ball mean? A dot ball means no runs are scored and no outs are, are recorded. 
right? We'll get to what runs and outs are in a second. But Markman throws the ball, Tim catches the ball, throws the ball back to Markman. We just do this all day and nothing ever has to happen if we don't want it to. So in general, that's the general mechanism of cricket. You have a bowler who runs, delivers the ball towards this area. Anna does whatever Anna wants to do. There's no rules about what you do. You can stand wherever you want. You can, you can basically do whatever you want as a batsman. Your call. Uh, you can like get down on one knee, you can turn around, you have some people that like try scoop, you can do whatever the hell you want. Uh, and, and Tim can stand wherever he wants to. Tim can be all the way back at the end of the pitch, he can be close. So that's the general mechanism of cricket. Can he, does he have to be behind the wicket? Nope. You don't have to have a wicket keeper, but we're going to see in a minute if you don't have a wicket keeper and Anna does not touch the ball and it doesn't hit the wicket, the ball is heading out for a boundary, which would be very bad. Uh, but Tim is, is arguably the most important defensive player. All right. Anybody have any questions? I know I haven't talked about what the good and bad things that can happen when this occurs, but for where we are right now, questions? I'm just going to let you roll. Sweet. Okay. So let's talk about the good thing that can happen. Now, baseball. Outs happen way more often than runs, right? So runs are the special play in baseball, and outs are the play that happens the majority of the time. Cricket, other way around. Outs happen randomly, or sorry, rarely. Runs happen frequently. So we'll get to the rare plays in a second, because the rare play is very similar to baseball, like the runs are the big things. We'll get to the outs in a second. But let's talk about how you can score runs, OK? So this is Anna's team's goal, right? We haven't even talked about the fact she's on a team. But Anna's goal is to amass as many runs as she humanly possibly can. Uh, when we get to the strategy se section of the presentation, we'll talk about I will break that rule. But what is the way that Anna scores runs? Here's how it works. Markman delivers the ball, bounces. Here we go. Ball comes. Anna is going to attempt to hit the ball. Let's say she does or does not. She makes contact with the ball. Now the ball is rolling out towards wherever we're going. It can go backwards, forwards, wherever the hell the ball is going. Anna and her partner, let's get a partner over here, Ash. Get up there. Anna and her partner have to decide, are we going to attempt to score the second the ball comes off? Generally, you will hear calls like yes, or run, or no, stop, right? Things like this. So it's a communication game between Anna and the batsman, the batsman on the other side of the pitch at this point. So Anna hits the ball, and she yells yes. So you're going to take your bat. He's got a bat in his hand. And you are going to run to the opposite ends of the pitch. This is when, if you saw Johnny Glace's YouTube video yesterday, things start to get a little goofy. You have people who are just changing positions. Now you're continuing to communicate with each other. Because every time that you switch spots is another run. So they just scored a one. So as you're running by, Anna and you and I, it's like, we're going to go one more. Oh, no, 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 we're going to go for two. We're going to go for two. You're going to stop, and you're going to turn immediately and just like come back. And, and you can score infinite number of runs in cricket. There's this, huh? You're carrying your bat. You're running with the bat. And you're switching spots with the dudes. You can score infinite number of runs. There's this like urban legend in cricket one time of like somebody hit this massive ball and there was a tree that was in the oval and the ball landed in the tree and never came down, but it didn't go out of bounds. And they scored 237 runs by the time that the people could actually get, <laughs> could actually get the ball out of the tree. So the, the, the running team would just run, 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 run all they want. Now, the majority of times that the team elects to run, you're only going to score one. Right? We'll get to fielding in a little bit, but like, it's really hard to score more than one. You may score two. Threes happen super rarely. So uh, think of it like a triple in baseball, like being able to hit the ball where the fielders aren't going to get it. You have time to switch places three times. And like occasionally, once a season or something like that, you'll see like someone had a sip like because the ball got thrown, slipped, and all this kind of stuff. But in general, you're going to go for one. You'll hear them talking to each other. Actually, a big advantage when you're playing at home, your crowd's going to be really loud. So they're going to be like yelling. And these people have to find a way to talk to each other as they're running. OK, so let's give the bat to Asher. We'll pretend you guys scored a run. Uh, that is the majority of the way that runs are scored in the cricket we're going to talk about. Yeah? What's the distance between where they're running? Yeah, I think it's about like 60 feet. Maybe it's 60 to 75 feet. Like, what does it look like on the thing? It's just the length of the pitch? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so between those, so basically so from the lines. Yeah, yeah, but there's yeah. there's another set of two lines with a wicket over here. Um, and they're running back and forth. Yeah. And run doesn't count until they both get there. They both have to cross the line. That's one run. Is crossing the line the bat extension? Yeah, it's actually the bat crossing yeah. over. That's how, that's how you do it. Portion Any portion of you and the bat touching the ground after you cross. Right? So you'll see people reach out, because that signifies that you've got to cross the line. Bat's extension of the arm. OK. 
We're Americans, we like big things, scoring one run at a time. Definitely not the John Pellengelly way to play cricket. So let's say, let's talk about boundaries. So Asher's a big dude. Anna might be a little bit more of a contact hitter when she plays cricket. Asher's a big dude. So Markman delivers the ball this time. Where'd her ball go? Oh, that's right. Went out into the field. Huh? So Anna's now the other. Yeah, they switched spots. So now Markman's delivering to Asher. So Markman bowls the ball. Boom. That's it. And Asher takes a big old MF and cut. Ball heads in the heads it bounces and rolls out of bounds. But any bouncing or roll that hits the boundary is worth four runs. You can think of it as the ground rule double. You can think of it as anything. Generally, it is the far more likely form of a boundary, if right? If it rolls out of bounds. So you as a defender in the defensive team, we'll talk about the defense in a while, like your job is to just make sure that ball does not go out of bounds, right? Because the odds that they'll be able to switch places four times, very, very unlikely. So the ball going out of bounds is obviously a very good team. And when it goes out four times, you don't have to run. So a lot of times what happens is like Asher smacks it and Asher starts hot dogging and like saluting the crowd because he knows the ball is going out for four. Uh, that's what's going to happen. Fours are pretty common in cricket. What is really not common in cricket, Markman delivers the ball, Asher takes a big old whack and in the air it clears out of the bounds, right? Asher hits this thing so square on it can go front, left, sideways, whatever, lands out of bounds, home run, whatever you want to call it, six runs. When there are home runs in cricket, the crowd generally goes nuts, right? Because they've been watching people play for hours and hours and hours without it actually happening, and Asher finally just gets super bored, so he just like lets one go and, uh, and go. Yeah, Tori. Is it rarer than in baseball, the home run? Way rare. Uh, there's different forms of cricket, which we'll get to at the strategy part of the presentation, but uh, in the long cricket, yeah. Uh, so 10% of fly balls in baseball are home runs. Uh, in, in cricket, it's going to be lower than that. Yeah. I forget if you already said this, but how how do you stop the players from switching places? Like, is it when the ball is caught mm. and the ball goes back? To we'll, the get to the we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. Nothing about defense yet. We'll be a lot. So is it is it part of like so? It's, it's basically whoever's at this end who gets who's batting. So like. Are, are so actually, you're going to bowl from the same end for a yeah. while, and then who's ever here bats, and then after a while, you actually switch and bowl the other way. So if you if 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 if, if you have to go back and forth the score run or just go back back just cross so it. you cross once that's one run that's one run so yeah. you switch places yes the will change. correct so is the strategy ever to go for to to keep so the there is a bit of a selfishness in cricket so the idea could be like let's say Asher does not think Anna's a very good hitter so Asher hits it and it's clearly a one like no way it's a two and no way it's a dot ball Asher could be stop. Because Asher doesn't want Anna to hit. <laughs> and Asher gets to stay on strike if they do not. So it's a communication game, right? And if some guy is like an asshole about it, then it can happen sometimes. So the outs are for the team, not for the batter? For the batter. Batter gets out. We'll talk about the outs in a second. I haven't talked about the outs yet. Cool? Cool. All right, so this is the goal, right? Running between the wickets, scoring boundaries. These extras we have here, I don't want to get into them. There are all sorts of illegal things that the bowler can do. The bowler can like run up too far. If the bowler like throws the ball over to this side, if uh, if uh, Tim misses the ball, so the ball bounces, it doesn't hit anything here. Tim, whatever, like that can be. There's all these things that the um, there are runs that can be given out at the umpire's discretion. I don't want to get into them because there's no need to kind of like very, very nuanced. But three ways to score runs. You can run between the wickets, hit a boundary, or the umpire can award you runs for what's going on here. Yeah? How fast at the pro level is the ball coming in? <laughs> ball's going, you know, that's your standard, you know, 95 mile an hour kind of. But ball, ball's moving. Yeah. Is it like the same pitch every time? How many variations? Yeah, so there's two main types of pitch. There's a seamer or like a fast bowler, and you'll see that, and we'll show you a video of it. And then there's these guys called spin bowlers. I'm not going to tell you which country is most notorious for spin bowling, but uh, it's a really populous country that's not very good at the Olympics. <clears throat> uh, but uh, like British, Australians, South Africans, like really known for throwing the ball super hard. People from the subcontinent are more sneaky. They're trying to, going to try to spin the ball to get you to get out. Okay, so that's Asher and Anna's goal. So what's Markman and Tim's goal? Their goal is to get outs. Now, like I said, outs are the rare thing that happens in cricket. Runs are scored willy-nilly all the time. You can have situations where people score a thousand runs in a match, right? Just like scoring, 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 et cetera. They're generally risk averse, like pretty straightforward. Uh, so how do you get an out? 
by the way, if you ever watch a cricket highlight, they may not even show you the boundaries. They may not even show you like the runs being scored, but they're going to show you the outs because the outs are the moments that are actually going to change the match. Okay, so there are officially 10 ways to get out in cricket. Uh, if you ever are in a Commonwealth country and you want to really make some friends, the trivia question to ask them is what are the 10 ways to get out in cricket? I promise you they won't get more than six and they will buy you a beer. Uh, I, bought a, I got bought a lot of beers for stumping Australians on this one. Why will they not get more than six? Because four of the 10 have only ha have happened fewer than seven times in the history of international cricket. Cricket's been being played 175 years, and one of them has literally never happened. Like there is a rule about like how someone can get out in cricket that like has never occurred. So you know you get the hot shot trivia guys like whatever. Um, so we won't get into the we won't get into the five ways. We could talk about them later. So let's talk about the from most common to least common ways to get out in cricket. Right, we're going to start with the most common. I have videos for the other four because they're really, really difficult to explain without a video. But for the first one, it's pretty straightforward. So Markman delivers the ball. Oh, looking good. Bounces. Asher swings. And it makes contact with any part of the bat or Asher's glove. OK? So this is really important. The ball makes contact with any part of Asher's bat or the glove. He can just barely nick the ball. This is why Tim's really important in this situation. Any contact with the bat, not his body, not his leg, not anything. Any part of the bat, the ball is launched into the air. Right? It is launched into the air and caught. The most common way that you could get out in cricket is just similar to the way that a lot of ways that you would get out in baseball. Ball hits the bat, up into the air, the ball is caught. To give you an idea, like over a five year period of time, I'll try to give you an idea of the frequency of this. In international test cricket, uh, caught was like 25,000 times. Right? So about 40% of the catches are actually going to be done by the wicket keeper behind the way. Think about like a foul tip. That's how you can kind of think of the baseball synonym. And about 60% are caught by the other nine people that I haven't actually told you that they exist in cricket right now. But like the ball can be caught by anybody at any time. Pretty straightforward. No gloves. Just got to catch this thing straight up. Um, like there are situations where somebody tries to reach out with their hand and it like hurts your hand and ball comes down. There are all sorts of, because you don't have a glove, like there are far more drops in cricket, similar to baseball, right? The ball, whatever. Okay, so let's talk about <laughs> the outs and if you've ever seen YouTube videos of Indian men yelling, uh, then we'll talk about this. So technically when you have an out in cricket, um, outs are given by the umpire and the reason that everybody yells when you try to get an out in cricket is that's the way you appeal to the umpire. They have to, they have to act actually appeal to the umpire. So when all of these you're going to see, when an out happens, people are just going to turn to the umpire and scream like there is no tomorrow. You're selling that there was an out. Now, sometimes you know there was an out. We'll talk about these here in a second. Other times you're not. OK, so the number one way, the second most common way to get it out after a strike, after uh, the caught, Markman throws the ball, and the ball knocks over the stump, or all it really has to do is dislodge the bales. Right? So the ball comes, dislodges the bales by hitting the stumps. That's called getting bold. The equivalent would be the strikeout. Right? So Asher's job, if he's batting, is to prevent the strikeout from happening. Right? It's almost like he should use his bat to make sure that this, to protect this, this stump. So here's some situations of taking a look at what it looks like when you get bold. So guy delivers the ball, boom, just destroys the stumps. All of these, I picked the most vicious videos, which show them from the back. The ball's moving so fast that the wood literally snaps in half. Oh, not that one, but you'll see the, there's, a, there's your Indian guy. Wham. Destroy. <laughs> these guys have no hope. You generally look really stupid when you get bold because you're a, such a big guy and your job is to prevent it from, from hitting that. Uh, Cool. That was pretty vicious. All the time. No. So you're, you wear a lot of padding when you're a hitter, when you're a batsman in cricket, and the only relevant part that could hit your body is just your bat and your glove. If you get hit anywhere else, it is as if nothing happens. Sometimes you can get hit and the ball squirts away. You can actually run after you get hit if you want to. Um, so wait, why don't they just stand in front of the wicket? They do. This, I mean, the ball's moving 100 miles an hour, and I'll show you. Your, it's a very good, very good uh, transition to the third most common way we get out. LBW. Where's my, where's my batsman? Okay. So, 
This was a question that existed in cricket for 100 years. Like, why should you, if you're cricket batting, why don't you just stand in front of the wicket and do everything you can to prevent the ball from going? And the reason is they invented a rule called LBW. Anybody know what LBW stands for? That would be really impressive. You know what? Leg before wicket. Of course, that's not. Uh, leg before wicket. So, ball's coming in. Let's say Asher realizes he cannot make contact with the ball. He like didn't start his swing early enough, but he, he's like, oh shit, the ball's gonna hit the stumps, which is bad. He can use his leg to block the ball. Now, this is the most controversial rule in cricket because if you use your leg to block the wall, you put the leg before the wicket, it is the job of this umpire over here to determine whether or not the ball was gonna hit the wicket. Right? So the ball gets whatever, hits your leg, everybody turns to the umpire. These are where the most controversial calls come in. I'll tell you, there was a lot of video that was invented in cricket, I won't show you now, of like how you review a play. They have this awesome Hawkeye technology of like trying to project where the ball would have gone if like your leg didn't get in the way. But Asher elects to put his leg in front of the stumps and the umpire adjudicates him out. Okay, so this happens almost as frequently as getting bowled. So what you're going to see right here is, <laughs> this is a Pakistani bowler who delivers the ball. You're not even going to see, you may not see it on your first time. Um, he's going to deliver the ball and he's going to immediately turn to the umpire and appeal for the LBW. And in this situation, the umpire's going to give out and then you'll see some replays of what actually happened here. Here's how a run out works. So, when the ball is placed into the field, right? So Asher hit the ball, it got bowled, he hits it going out into the field. Uh, you're gonna yell to Anna, one, or whatever you may yell. So Anna and Asher are turning. I am playing the field over here. Slow, stop guys, before you get there. I'm playing the field over here, I catch the ball. Now, if I throw, if the bales are dislodged on either wicket before that person gets to that wicket that they're heading towards, right? And they're getting there, then in that instance, they are deemed run out. Now, so I'm gonna like pick up the ball and I'm gonna look who's closer to the wicket. That's why when you run in cricket, you wanna be really risk averse, right? You do not wanna be risk seeking because I'm gonna, this is where the outfield assist comes in, right? And you're gonna be looking at the wicket. Now, a lot of run outs, the way they work, is I'm gonna just throw the ball in the general vicinity, trying to hit the stumps to get them out. And for example, Tim, can just go and knock them off as long as he has the ball in his hand. So you don't have to actually hit them from afar, but the dope ass runouts are the ones where, you know, some dude is, you know, 400 feet away from the wickets and throws them and just like guns some guy out. So this one that I'll show you right here is, this is an Australian guy, he's most recently the, the captain of Australia. He, he, you're gonna see him dive, come to his feet and just you know, strike right at the opposite wicket, right? So most of the time you're going to throw towards the wicket that's closest to you. This is how this guy uh, decides to handle it. Boom. <laughs> now I will tell you, like you can see how nuts they're going for an out because an out is just like a huge deal, much less an out that's via run out in that situation. Australians are probably drunk at this situation. Uh, uh, so if, when you think about it, right, uh, if you're a runner knowing that that's a situation that can, can happen, like you need to be very risk averse when you're running, right? Because you do not want to be run out. Unlike baseball where there's a force where you, in certain situations, you have no choice but to run to the other side of the, of the pitch. In cricket, you don't have to, right? And that's why the majority of balls that you just hit and go to a fielder, stop, don't run. That's a lot of where those dot balls come from. Yeah? There's a rule that when the runner crosses over the line, they have to go to the other side, or can they nope. go Nope, you can go back? Yep. Oh, okay. Absolutely no, as but long as the, the two is not over the line, then you can get out at any I think you have to throw it to the one that's closer. So like, if you hit that wicket, it's about the person who's closer. So like, if that person's over and you hit that wicket and this guy's here, I don't think it's considered, it's deemed out. You would have had to throw it to this wicket to get him. Nope, only the wicket. Tagging doesn't get anything you want. Just what you said earlier though, like if you gotta catch the ball, 
he can run over and just knock the weakness. Like, yeah. So like you can like if the ball if you nick so we'll show like let's say uh, Asher hit the ball directly back at the bowler and started running right the bowler can just take the ball and knock off the bales assuming that they are past whatever. So why is it the one who's who's closer? It seems like that'd be really hard to determine. Who if short, you should run in such a short pitch? Who should run? Like if you should run? Is that what you're saying? Well, I, maybe I'm misunderstanding with which wicket you're throwing at. Mm -hmm. You can throw it either one. You don't have to. You, you as a fielder can knock over either wicket that you would like. Oh, so when you say whichever one you're closer to, you mean like you can run back to. Yeah, so in this situation, to show this video again, he's actually closer to the wicket where the batsman started. Mm -hmm. And like just vi like visually closer to that one, yet he elects to throw the ball to the opposite end because in all likelihood, the batter that was coming towards the one that's closer to him would have gotten there in time. Right? So he's closer to that one over there. He's going to throw the ball all the way to try to get that guy out. So you can throw it to hit. The other guy was already safe. right? So there's no need to throw it at that one. Stop and go back. Yep, stop and go back. Um, one of them stop and go back and have the other one not? Or do they have to both do the same thing? Well, so if, <laughs> if, if one person's here and the other person's halfway down the wicket, <laughs> that wicket, you could get the person out by throwing it at that wicket. Right, but they can't end up on the same side. Cannot end up on the same side. You're always going to be switching positions. Final way you can get out. My buddy Charlie said I shouldn't have even explained this to you guys, but I, you know me in, com in completeness. So, uh, you can get stumped. Now, stumped is pretty dope. Where's my batter, Ash? Come here. I need Tim. Where's my? So uh, as I told you, as a hitter, you can go wherever you want. There is like no rule to where you can stand. So if Markman delivers the ball, right, boom, it bounces. Let's say Asher gets a little greedy and is like, I can come knock this ball off. So he takes a step out and misses. And rather than getting bold, Tim, who's now standing right next to the stumps, catches it and knocks these stumps off. If Asher has crossed this line in an attempt to hit the ball, you can knock off the stumps on your side. Do I right? completely across the line? All parts of your body have to be across the line. Right? So there are very few good stumpers in cricket. Like the idea of stumping is really hard to do, and it happens in like the most immediate instant Stump, possible. Being like Tim, Tim, right? Because Tim has to notice that Asher has crossed the line, and Asher knows he crossed the line, so he's doing everything he can to get back. Most hitters don't cross the line when they try to hit, right? It would be the equivalent of like you could go out of the batter's box when you hit. So here, the recently retired most famous uh, keeper in modern history is the Indian guy, Masindra Singh Dhoni. And uh, he's arguably the best stumper of all time. So here's him stumping a couple of Kiwis. So they, here you're going to see the review, right? When things, right, when things happen in real time, you can't even see it. He knows it. <laughs> so, so they're going to go to review here, and they'll go really show and show you what happens. He just missed. He lost his balance and like thought. Yeah, you look like a douche. <laughs> There's no penalty. Here's gonna go slower. Here's a here's another one. <laughs> Fastest gloves in the West. This glove work is like lightning. In the East. Hey, he looks, like, looks like an athlete. Yeah. They always review it, or is that just. No, so so Which we could talk. <laughs> we could talk for hours and hours about review and cricket. It would be like if I tried to explain review and football. The review is different in different parts of the world. What you can do. They don't always review it. They they prefer that the umpires got it right 100% of the time. The umpires obviously don't get it right 100% of the time. So there's all these rules about when you can review and, and things like that. Things like that. Yeah. Okay. So thus concludes basics of cricket. <laughs> As you, just to review what we've talked about, you have a pitch. The idea, you have bowlers and batters. The bowler has a guy that stands behind 
uh, behind the, the stumps called a wicket keeper. And in general, the job of the bat and the batsman and or his or her partner that's over there is to score runs. Three ways to score runs, running between the wicket, hitting the boundary, or being awarded a run by the referee for something illegal that the fielders do. And then outs. So outs are something that are recorded by the bowling team. Ten ways to get out. Uh, five of them have happened fewer than seven times in international cricket history, so they're not relevant. But the other five are catching the ball, getting struck out, uh, putting your leg before the wicket, getting run out when you're actually running, or getting stumped. Cool. I, I see a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So for those of you who, so obviously I have not talked at all about how to win cricket, what teams, how teams actually work in cricket, whatever it is. I'm going to talk. So they change offense, defense. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> That's all part of the strategy. So if you guys, if you don't want to stick around for the second part, I totally understand. People have work to do. Uh, I am going to talk about what is a cricket team, how does defense actually work, what does it mean to win, runs, whatever it may be. I will not feel insulted at all if you leave because I realize that, uh, there are all sorts of reasons that you would or would not want to know. But all right, so let's start talking about the actual strategy of cricket, right? So everything that I've determined so far is simply like the like what you would do if you and your friends went out and played cricket. Like those are the rules. Now you are eligible to watch cricket and like totally get what's going on and not going to uh, not over time that. Okay, where do things start to get complicated? I'm now fast forwarding in. All right, so. If you are, uh, cricket is actually played 11 on 11. Okay, we haven't even mentioned that, right? Uh, I've only taught you about the three people. So cricket is actually played 11 on 11. <clears throat> and we'll get to the, there's very little strategy when it comes to the batting side of cricket. But the fielding side of cricket is unbelievably complicated and sophisticated. So other than your bowler, which you are entitled to have one of, and your wicket keeper, which you can only have one of. If you could have more, you would likely pick them because huge advantage, you get to wear gloves. You as a captain get to position nine other cricketers wherever else you want on the pitch. There are no rules as to where you can put the other nine players. So there is massive strategy in determining where these guys are. They have hilarious names, things like short leg, silly mid on, third man, deep backward point, deep fine leg, like, like there's, they're, they're great. Uh, they, they have to have these complicated names because there's, like, there's no such thing as a cricket position, right? Now, for those of you who are looking to an analogy for baseball, in baseball you technically can put players wherever you'd like, right? And very rarely you will see kind of abnormal, more and more, but very rarely you see abnormal positionings in baseball. In cricket, there's no such thing as a normal position. There's no such thing as a normal arrangement. And it is the job of the captain to uniquely decide where you want to put all the players. For those of you who are interested in analytics, analytics have changed the game on this. Right? So I was talking like at the international level of cricket, you are going to have intense levels of analysis uh, for every bowler, for every batter, what are the likeliest places that the ball is going to go and where should we position our players. I asked my buddy Charlie yesterday, I said, when you were in high school and you played against another cricket team, how would you decide? You didn't have video, you didn't have anything, and he was just like, yeah, you know, you made some mistakes sometimes, <laughs> right? You'd see some little dude like walk up to the thing, you're like, everybody in! And like, first ball, the guy is fucking destroys it. And you're like, okay, we need to think about repositioning, right? Like, he's just like, this is a great, this is a great story. So at every given ball, every given minute, you can move the players around. What's generally the idea? Generally the idea is you're going to to have the more aggressive you want to be, you're going to be closer to the pitch, right? Because you're going to say, I'm going to try to get outs, I'm going to try to prevent runs, and if the ball gets over my head and goes for a boundary, like I'm okay with that. Farther away you get, you're going to be able to prevent boundaries, runs, are, they're not going to get fours, they're not going to get threes, but the odds that you get an out can sometimes go down, right? Because the most risk averse thing for a batsman to do is just kind of like hit the ball on the ground, right? So the ball comes to me, I'm just going to like hit it on the ground right here. In baseball, I think it's something like, you know, we'll say 60 to 65% of the hits are pulls, and about 30 to 35%, or 35 to 40% are going to be pushes or, or opposite way, the opposite in cricket. Right? More, bat, more batting in cricket is going to be like off to the opposite side. So if the batsman, which is here, is right-handed, you see these positions here are called the slips. So the idea behind the slips would be if you get the ball and it just nicks your bat a little bit, think about like a foul tip, you could put a guy back over here to catch the foul tip. 
right? So you can have five guys there in the slips, but that means that you only have four guys somewhere else. Right? So thoughts behind where you're going to field, put your um, fielders is really, really important. Cool? So now you kind of can get a visualization of what like a whole cricket pitch is going to be. You can have 11 guys fielding, two guys batting right, at any given time. Key terms to understand before we actually get to how to win a cricket match. So these are going to be the various lengths of time, the, the temporal elements of cricket. So the first one is the, pretty, the, the, the smallest unit of cricket. Uh, you guys would know it in baseball as a pitch. Uh, in cricket it is called a ball or a delivery. You will sometimes hear that. So how many balls was this batsman, did this batsman face or throw? Now there are situations, there are situations called no balls. So you can throw a ball and the umpire can deem that you broke a rule in the tossing of that ball. I don't actually, I didn't do enough research to figure out whether or not a no ball is a ball, but that's not really important at this time. But like any ball that comes this way is considered a ball. Who was asking me about switching sides? Kayvon was asking me about switching sides a little bit over. Uh, there are six balls in an over. Now an over is the number of time, number of balls in a row that the, bat, the bowling team has to determine who is going to bowl. They cannot change who they are bowling and they're always bowling the same way. Right, so it's like time for a new over. I say, okay, you know, Markman, you're my bowler. Markman comes over here, he's bowling this way. He has to bowl six balls this way. When the over ends, I cannot pick Markman to be my bowler for the next over. I have to pick somebody else to be my bowler. That bowler will start over here and bowl this way for six balls. The batsmen do not, the batsmen change in the way that I've showed you, right? So if one batsman stays on the same side for an entire over, the next over will begin with the other batsman beginning to bat. So you don't have any sort of control over who's batting. So this is really important. You cannot replace a bowler in the middle of an over. So some guy you know, tosses ball, just tosses a meatball up there, gets crushed on ball number one for a boundary. He's got to throw five more balls. Right? And there have been some painful overs in cricket. Obviously the worst thing you could do in cricket is a 36, 36 runs in an over. Great YouTube videos out there of like some guy just getting taken six home runs in a row. It happens in cricket all the time. It's awesome, right? Especially when you're the home team and you're behind and some dude just started wailing on it, all right? So there's six, uh, there's six balls that's in an a, over. That's if you pick a really bad bowler, right? Even good bowlers have, <laughs> have their moments, man. Right. I mean, like, it's a, it happens. Okay someone else in the field? Yeah, so every player is eligible to be a bowler. <laughs> we'll talk about in a second like how many bowlers you kind of want on your team. There are players you want it to specialize, but uh, yeah. Who's got my question? Can you just switch back and forth between yeah. bowlers? So in, in what we're going to talk about test cricket, um, it, it's a five-day match. So if you uh, if you want the two the same two guys throwing the ball over and over and over again, that's your own decision. Um, hopefully you have a good team surgeon because those guys are going to be those guys' arms are going to be tossed out. Yeah. If you know that the batter can catch your ball, then can you? not true towards the wicket? Yeah, so like there's no requirement to try to hit the wicket, right? Like there's no requirement at all. Now, if you throw the ball so abnormally far away from the wicket, right? You're a bowler and you toss it over here. That's where the umpire has some leeway to say like, nope, that you can't do that. It's deemed illegal, the running team gets a run. But there are all sorts of situations where like Big Papa's over here and his buddy the not very good batter's over here, so you are doing everything you can to not get anywhere near him, <laughs> right? Because you're just like, I, ugh, really, really bad idea. You will see all sorts of situations where like all the batsman is trying, all the bowler's trying to do is just get through his over. <laughs> like I just do not want to get taken for, you know, you get taken for 25 runs in an over and you, you feel pretty shitty. Not, not a good situation. Yeah. All right, so unlike innings in baseball where it's bat, 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 in uh, cricket your entire team bats, right? So your innings is like your team's turn to bat while the other team's in the field, right? So it's your innings. you're out, you don't bat again. Yes, correct. In that inning. Yep. Okay, so this is why I didn't start here. I could have started here. This is how cricket is won and played or whatever it may be. There are three main forms of cricket in this world. And the, the hard part about it is the oldest forms of cricket are the forms of cricket that are not on TV. <laughs> 
So like the odds that you are going to see the oldest forms of cricket are low. Uh, the guy who taught me cricket is from England and went to Eton and is a bit of a posh dude. So of course my favorite part of cricket, my favorite form of cricket is like not the cool part. It's like the old way of cricket that they've been playing. So I'm going to explain to you that form of cricket. I'm going to explain to you the other three. Right? So like just the mechanics of everything I've described to you can be played three different ways. Okay? So the original, like cricket, how it was played with absolutely no difference for the first hundred years of the game and is still played today, is something called either test cricket or first class cricket. Uh, the reason it's called test cricket is because it is a test. <laughs> it's like a test of will to be able to do this. So how does test cricket work? Test cricket means each team is entitled to two innings and those innings are of indeterminate length. <laughs> like they can last as long as you want them to. Right? So your turn to bat, you can bat into perpetuity. It's like bat, 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 bat. What are ways that the innings actually end? Okay? The most common way that an innings ends is 10 of your 11 batters get out. Right? Obviously the 11th guy can't get out because by the time he would have to bat alone and you can't bat alone. But when 10 of your 11 batters get out, you are deemed all out. Now how does that actually work? That means you send two guys are generally called your openers. You send them out there, they bat, one of them gets out, send your next guy out there, one of them gets out, send your next guy out there, one of them gets out until you have sent all 11 guys through. Wait, dude, is there, are there cases where both of them get out at the same time? Nope. Not possible. So how do they decide who's out? Like what if they're both not across the line? It's whatever wicket got hit. Right, who's ever gonna be closer to that wicket is gonna be the guy that was deemed gotcha. to get out. All right, so the most common way that the innings actually ends is the guys get all out. Number two, the captain declares the innings closed. So let's say you are just crushing it, right? You bat, you've been batting for fucking eight hours. Your team is just like on fire, right? You're, you're not gonna get out. You're not even close to getting out. Your dudes are just wailing on these other dudes. You can say, we're done, right? Now, we're done is not a version of the mercy rule. We're done is a way to avoid a draw. So we'll get to it at the end. In cricket, in test cricket, matches are five days. You play, you play cricket five days in a row. If the fifth day ends, it is a draw regardless of the score. Right? So you, if you're some, if you're some team and you just decide, no, we're batting, for, we're batting for five days. We're just gonna bat, 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 bat. You bat an entire five days at the end of the fifth day. It's 10,000 to zero. The other team has never bet, picked up the bat. It's a draw. <laughs> really British thing to do. Like, just like, oh, time's up. Doesn't matter what the score is, right? So you, as, a, as, a, as the captain that's winning, have to be thoughtful of that. You should be like, look, like, I, we just don't need any more runs. Now, the question to be asked are, are there situations where captains have declared and lost? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, and let me tell you, not a fun uh, post-game press conference, right? Uh, you, so when you declare, also a ton of math involved in that, right? Thinking about how much time's left, or whatever it may be. Third way in innings can win, if in the fourth innings, right? So in general, you would bat in the first or the third innings, or the second and the fourth innings. If the team batting in the fourth innings has overcome the total run total, uh, of the team that accumulated runs in the first and the third innings, the game ends, right? Because the team in the fourth innings would have ultimately uh, come, or the match time expires, right? So this would be on the fifth day, you get to six o'clock, and that's the way it works. Yeah? How do you decide who starts? Yeah, so who, when I was in the FH office, I was telling you guys about the toss. Charlie really wanted me to talk about the toss. It's actually a coin toss. Uh, and very dissimilar from the other sports, you would think it is an advantage to bat second and fourth in cricket. Actually not the case. The reason is pitch deterioration. It is a lot easier to bat on a pitch to bat first. By the time you bat fourth, this little piece of ground that you've been playing on for the last five days is destroyed. And it is way harder when the ball's bouncing on the ground and there's bumps, cracks, bruises, mounds, whatever, to know where the ball is going to go versus batting at the very beginning. The, the pitch is not deteriorated. So you generally want to bat first and third. So they don't do any maintenance 
So the home team gets to decide what type of maintenance is done, um, but you can only roll the pitch. You cannot, I don't think you can physically repair the pitch. There's like certain rules about that, and you better believe there are great stories about dudes sneaking out at night with, you know, like shovels and shit, and you know, like games have been played for 175 years. Okay, five days max, six hours of play a day, right? So uh, games start at 11, 11 to 1. At 1 o'clock, you take 40 minutes for lunch, you play till 11.40, uh, uh, yep, then you play for two hours, you come back till 3.40, 3.40 to 4 o'clock is tea, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and then you were done. Uh, so you play, you play from 11 to 7, 11 to 6. There are situations where you can, explain, you can uh, put it up a little bit higher, but you can play for the maximum of five days. Uh, the match can end, like, the number of different ways cricket matches have ended, you know, like, I feel like there's like some where they end in like a fencing duel or something like that, but are a lot, but uh, there's generally the most common four innings are complete. So if the team who, uh, if the team who's batting fourth doesn't get enough runs, uh, it, and they just get all out, it's over. Uh, the fourth team, the fourth innings batting team overcomes the chase. The uh, third innings ends with the team batting once still ahead. Now, there's a rule called a follow on. If you are more, after the, after the second innings, if, one, if the team that batted first is more than 200 runs ahead of the other team, they can actually force the other team to bat again immediately. It's called a follow on. It's generally decided to be like, look, we don't want to play. We don't need to bat again. Like, let's get this over as quickly as possible. Follow-ons used to be unbelievably popular because people wanted to save time. Uh, now they're actually less popular because of the pitcher's arms. So if you follow on, your pitchers have to keep pitching. Your bowlers have to keep bowling, sorry. And uh, that's not good, right? And ultimately, you, know, you don't ultimately want to do that. Yeah? They don't have to last five innings. They don't have to last, the matches don't have to last four innings. They have to last at least three. Unless there's a rain out. Oh no, days. They don't have to last five days. They can last one day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like if if the wicket's hot and wickets get taken, they can last a day. I once famously uh, had a ticket to day four of a test, and it ended at 5:30 on day three. <coughs> that was a really good use of money for me. Uh, day one of all the tests are the big days, and then after that, the tickets get real cheap. Day five, they don't even sell tickets to. Uh, if the day, if the test goes to a fifth day, you just go to the box office and buy it because they would. The likelihood that it's going to go five days is generally pretty low. No refund on that ticket. I don't think I got a refund. All right, limited overs cricket. So as you guys realize, probably uh, playing cricket for five days is a really bad idea. Uh, if your number one way to monetize a sport is via the media and it takes five days to finish a match, uh, you shouldn't do that. So in the 70s. Uh, a guy named Kerry Packer, who, <coughs> Australian billionaire, said, well, we're never going to be able to actually make any money off this thing. You know what we should do? We should make the game shorter. So he said, why, why do five days? Let's do one day, whole day. So one day cricket uh, is generally 50 overs. So each team only bats one time, and you bat for 50 overs max. Now, this is where the strategy starts to change. Everything that I taught you about strategy applies to test cricket. In 50 overs cricket, suddenly now dot balls become a little bit worse for the batting team, right? Because every dot ball now is a ball that you don't get to hit again, right? Now, the rules get stricter about what dictates a wide, right? What dictates how close you have to be to the wicket. 50 overs, innings still in the, still in the same way, right? Either you get all out, or uh, there's no declaring in one day. There's no reason that you would want to declare. But either everybody gets all out uh, or uh, the 50 overs ends. A couple of cool things about one day cricket. Number one, the bowling restrictions. So somebody was asking me, like in test cricket, you can have two guys that bowl all day. In, in one day cricket, you have to have, every, each person can only bowl a maximum of 20% of your overs. So you can only bowl 10 overs. So you cannot have two guys that each bowl 25 overs and are just awesome at it. Uh, so you have to have a lot more bowlers on your team. And in one day cricket, there's sometimes fielding restrictions. So in a, it's to encourage run production, you'll actually make people be closer to the pitch, right? Because you want this awesome shit to happen. One day cricket was uh, d determined for TV, for media. Like they wanted it to be more exciting. The World Cup of Cricket contested every four years, one day cricket. Right, one day cricket. I don't know, I think Australia is the winner, the currently the holder of the World Cup. Now, one day, for those of you who are media people, still not short enough <laughs> for TV, right? If you have to watch all day, uh, you're just not going to do it, right? People don't have that type of patience. So, 
uh, the British came up with it, but the Indians have popularized 2020 cricket. So instead of 50 overs a side, it's actually 20 overs a side. Now, 20 overs a side is only 180 balls. So a dot ball in 2020 cricket is a really bad outcome for the batter. So what happens in 2020 cricket? Ball gets delivered, dudes just start wailing. Right? And modern day cricket is starting to, this 2020, is starting to become way more popular. Because right? you go and see it and dudes swing as hard as they possibly can and they're going for home runs all the time, sixes in this. One of the things that you look at, uh, one of the stats I'll show you in a second, is strike rate. Uh, so the balls are runs per 100 balls. So in test cricket, a good strike rate is like 40. So for every 100 balls you catch, you only score 40 runs. In, uh, in 2020 cricket, you want a strike rate of like 300, <laughs> right? You want to get three runs for every ball that you face because that's like really what you're going for. So 2020 cricket, there's more. Bowlers can only bowl four overs. So uh, think about like your relievers. Like Araldus Chapman would never be able to play test cricket because he would have to bowl for days and days. But like there are some Araldus Chapmans in 20 cr 2020 cricket, these guys that could just show up, come up and just destroy the ball. Yeah. He's the best reliever in baseball, arguably. He was the Cubs closer. Uh, but like some guy that could throw the ball 120, you know, 100 miles an hour, that, there's no use for that test cricket because that guy just can't last the five days that would you need. But in 2020 cricket, everything's just bigger, better. So the Indian Premier League, the IPL, is the number one cricket league in the world. 2020 cricket, right? It's on TV. Everybody watches it. Um, really, really cool thing. Okay. Yeah, 20, but also the hitters, you know, are just swinging way bigger. It's just a different game. But yeah, absolutely, you can throw, throw right at somebody, and a lot of padding, a lot of padding. But yeah. There's a guy that died, right? Guy, guy died in Australia. Yep. Uh -huh. Guy hit him. Ball hit him in the neck, I believe. He didn't have a net pad. I hit him right here. Down stuff and got him. jugular. Yeah. Uh, all right, fun facts about cricket. So, so all that I've showed you is like general game strategy, et cetera. A few things I just want to tell you about like what I like about cricket. Uh, these are all, I actually had a list of like 40 things and I cut it down to like uh, what I can. So test cricket, one cool thing, there's no test cricket tournaments. There's just like 10 international teams that play test cricket and they just like play test cricket against each other into perpetuity. It's almost like the sand lot. They just like go and they play each other and there's no trophies, there's no whatever, you just play. There's no, think of it like golf, right? There might be individual tournaments, but like really it's just a circuit that goes over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, there are teams that are like known to be the best in the world, but like you don't get anything for that. And in, test, in, in five day cricket, there's no actual thing for it. I think that's really cool. Second thing, it is the, mo the most powerful captain in the world of any sports is in cricket. So the coaches do effectively nothing during a game. There's like really no such thing as a cricket coach. Everything is done by the captain. So how the field aligns, who bats when, who's bowling. Like when you're actually out on the field, you would see how far away the, the coach would actually be. Like it's all decided by the captain. So if you are the captain of your cricket team, <coughs> you are the most important person uh, as far as like an on-field leadership that you can imagine. Uh, way more strategy than a quarterback. It'd be as if the quarterback was also the offensive coordinator. In, in football, right? It's just a very mo most powerful thing. Team strategy, no, <laughs> the captain just yells at them. Third thing, so like cr cricket, I told you it was like a big stats game. You can imagine like information, wisdom. So like cricket stats predate stats from like any of the other sports. This, this company or this guy, Wisden, started publishing almanacs of all the cricket matches that happened in the world uh, 155 years ago. So there's 155 annual editions of everything that has occurred in cricket. So when I was, I, the, I got the 2012 edition, there are 1,500 pages in this book. Uh, very, very cool. But obviously things had to modernize. Uh, so you can take a look at it if you want. Uh, ESPN is actually the world leader in cricket information. So we'll go to ESPN Crick Info at the very end, but I'm almost done. Uh, well, the number one cricket website in the world owned by ESPN. ESPN Crick Info. Very, very cool. So you don't think of ESPN as being involved in sports that you don't know them involved in, but they absolutely are. The Ocho, yeah. A uh, couple more things. Duckworth Lewis rules. So in one day cricket, there's this really cool thing for those of you who like stats of like what happens when, what happens if there's weather delays? So let's say you play one day cricket, one team bats, they bat for 50 overs, thunderstorm shows up. Two hours. Can't play for two hours. So you cannot actually finish the game, right? Because the, it says to do 50 overs, you'd be batting till midnight. There's an algorithm used to decide how to shorten the game. 
And the chase, the number you can go chase is actually reduced. So let's say I bat for 400 runs and then it's your turn to bat and the sky opens up for two hours so the game shortened by two hours. I may only have to chase 125. And I may only get 15 overs to do it. Right? It's a very cool like algorithm side of the sports. Unbelievably controversial. Right? Because a team can beat another team 100 to 500. But they didn't get to bat for as long. Night watchman. So there's, I told you there's not a lot of strategy with batting in cricket. That's mostly true. Uh, there, but you can do some really funny things. So let's say you're like at the very top of the order and there's like 10 minutes remaining in the day of cricket. And it's the time for the third batter to come up. And so your third batter, he's like your most important hitter. And like you really don't want him to get out in those 10 minutes. You would rather him like wake up the next morning fresh, knowing he's going to bat. So you could, do, you could send out this person called the night watchman, uh, who's a bad batter. But you tell the night watchman to go out there specifically to not get out. So it's, like, it's almost like it's his job to survive 10 minutes. Sometimes when you watch night watchmen bat, it's hilarious because all they really want to do is avoid getting bold. So they will like sit down here like this, like almost like a little uh, troll defending the, uh, defending the wicket because they were told by their captain, just don't get out. <laughs> right? We need this guy batting tomorrow and I don't want to send him out to bat tonight. Last thing, I think the coolest part of cricket. Um, if you ever have a conversation with someone, who is the best person in their sport ever? Uh, the answer is cricket. Uh, a guy by the name of Donald Bradman, now Sir Donald Bradman, he died in 2001, played cricket in the 30s and 40s in Australia. He's an Australian. He is far and away the best cricketer ever. Great analysis was done a few years back looking at all the sports, the best people at those sports, and looking how many standard deviations above the mean that they were compared to everybody else. So it's like Wayne Gretzky goals per game, Jack Nicholas uh, majors, Michael Jordan points per game, etc. So all of them are around 3.5 standard deviations above the mean. Uh, Bradman is 4.5 standard deviations above the mean. So in test cricket, his batting average across the 52 tests that he played was 99.94. So every time it was his turn to bat, he averaged almost 100 runs. The second highest person in cricket all time, 61. <laughs> he, is 30, he has averaged 38 runs per test more than the second place cricketer. Why? He was just the best. <laughs> the Don. I, it just no. It, it was in the 30s and 40s. There's not a lot of good video of like how he did it. Like you can imagine in Australia, especially he is like he's a guy. Like he's just like a. So, so he's got somebody else that he's running with, right? Yes. And let's say they, they only get one run. Yep. On the other side. Yeah. Is he still batting? Nope. Unless the over ended. Unless it was then time to bat to bowl from the other side. But he's not out. He's not out. So then the other guy's padding. Yep. And so then like it switches back and he goes back. Exactly right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Isn't this a Gretzky? I don't know like what the yeah. guy, but doesn't he have like the most points if even if you take away his like assist? Yeah, yeah. So if you if you take away his goals, he still has the most points yeah, or something like that. That's still like a bigger uh, than the Don. Uh, yeah, it's the Don, the Don, like when you look at it, and we're talking like cricket, he stopped playing I think in like 1942. So this has been 80 years since he quit playing cricket and no one has gotten close. Yeah, I have one right? more question. Yeah, yeah please. Um, how can you understand anything about a century? What's a century? 100 runs. It's 100 runs. Yep. So like, is known as a good. Like the only thing I've ever heard about cricket besides a wicket. Yeah? Uh, all right. Never, played, Never played the game. <laughs> really? Never played. I'd love to. So I basically built everything of the presentation today to teach you how to read a cricket scorecard. I did not tell you that I was doing, but now you know how. So uh, very similar to like baseball and box scores. Like because cricket takes so long and so complicated, like you really how you record the game. You can take a look at wisdom. Like it's really important, right? These things happen. Like they're just very, very long, whatever. So uh, ESPN Cricket Info. Let's take a look at how you would actually do it. So India first innings. Right, let's see what actually happened. So these are the way that the 11 guys batted, right? This is how the captain set them out. Right next to them is every way that they got out, right? So once again, getting out is the most important thing in the world. So in this case, uh, Nathan Lyon was the bowler and it was caught by Renshaw. 
Stark was the bowler, LBW. Lion was the bowler, caught, LBW. Stumped, stumped, caught, caught, not out, right? So one person's always gonna be not out, uh, and caught. So in this case, no bowls, right? Nobody was actually bowled. Uh, stumped was the, the thing, yeah, two stumps. Wade, Matt Wade had a good day. Um, what are the stats that are actually kept here? Runs, so R is runs. B, balls, so the number of balls that you actually faced. Fours, sixes, so in this game you can see there were absolutely zero sixes, right? So the home run is a very rare thing. And then there's that strike rate, right? Strike rate is gonna be the number of runs you scored per 100 balls that you faced. So the guy that scored the most runs only had a strike rate of 443. This is a 2020 game? No, this is test. Okay. Psh, I think I'll show you 2020. You you Australia. Do you, is there a fantasy for you? There is. Oh yeah, I do not, I should. Uh, looking down at the bowlers, so they elected to have five bowlers, five people bowl. Uh, this is the number of overs that they bowled. So one guy, you can see, only bowled two overs. M's are maidens. So if you bowl an entire over without a run being scored, that's called a maiden. So it's like a very cool thing. Uh, R is the number of runs you gave up. Wickets, the number that you took. You can see in this case, uh, Nathan Lyon took eight wickets or eight outs. It was the most, uh, taking eight outs, this guy, uh, They've been writing about it for days. This was like the greatest performance in, of an Australian in India, like ever. T took eight of the 10 outs. Economy or the number of runs you gave up per over. So he gave up 2.2 runs, 1.9 um, How many zeros you had, how many fours, how many sixes? And Show, uh, like a, it was like a shot chart of where the outs were caught. So here you can see like where the balls went here, uh, but the outs, yeah, there's charting of like all this stuff and like where the balls went, uh, et cetera. You can see like all this stuff over here. Heat charts, uh, partnerships, right? So it's known as, as having a partnership, whatever it may be. One thing that's on here that sometimes uh, they quote that's not here is uh, minutes. So you actually see like how many minutes you were batting. Um, there are guys, as you probably realize, that bat all day. <laughs> like if you bat all day, he's heard the term century in test cricket 100 runs is known as something that's good, 200 runs, not good, or 200 runs is amazing, 300 I think the highest ever, like somebody did like 401 runs in an innings or something like that, they just sat out for like two and a half days and did it. Um, so for those of you who want to know what the score of the match is, so it's the end of day three, so this is where like the words are used all over the time, stumps also means the day has ended, so stumps on day three means they're not playing anymore. So India was 189 in their first innings, and they're 213 for four, so they have 213 runs in their second innings, they'd have four outs, so if we go down to the third inning scorecard, you'll see they probably have, there's one, two, three, four, Mr. Kohli's not out yet, uh, there they are. So this game's still being played. Yeah, still being played, the end of day three. Uh, and they've, they've been batting for 72 overs so far. Uh, so what Australia is going to try to do is on day four is bowl them out real fast, right? Not that they weren't going to try to do that anyway, and then just chase the total, right? And get over it. Um, India at this point like wouldn't end up declaring. Wait, what was the last one? India would not declare. You would really only declare like, India could, like let's say India batted all of day four and this 213 turned into like a 650. Right, like they just like scored 400 and something runs in day three, day four. Then they may declare because they want to try to bowl Australia out on day five, as opposed to the like. It, right now, the possibility of a draw is really high, right? And they and they they don't want they don't want it to end in a draw. If you're winning, you don't want it to end in a draw. And with that, uh, that's all I got. Awesome.